stuff I've been doing and getting up to, I have finished or the finale of Happy Valley just happened the other day. I only binged it recently, a week or so ago. It's been featured on my BBC I Play homepage forever. I think most people was the same thing. And um, I never really paid much attention to it. When I initially saw the post of Happy Valley, I just assumed it would be some, you know, drama, soppy, emotional, um, cringy, rommy, commie, comedy type show, right? I'm not really a fan of those type of things. So I left it alone. But when I did give it a try, oh my, oh my, was I surprised and was I delighted. It was legitimately a really decent cop TV drama. And to be fair anyway, when it comes to the UK, we do really good cop TV dramas. Like even ones that aren't that serious, ones that are a little bit more slapstick. They're a little bit more drama based, like things like The Bill. But I think of other stuff, you know, thriller type stuff, like, you know, spooks being really good. So we do do a good job of kind of handling those shoes. I think even another one, I think it's called Hardwood or something. So they're pretty decent. It's pretty hard to find a TV series and from the UK that involves police officers and investigating crime or organized crime or MI5 or espionage, all that sort of stuff that isn't good. It's very hard to find it. I thought it started off amazing. If anything, I thought whoever wrote, I forgot the, the person who wrote the series, so please don't hold me to it, the names and stuff, because I don't remember all this sort of stuff. I'm just going to give you my overview of Happy Valley. I thought what they did really well was situating the village and also giving you a kind of idea of what village life, village life is actually like in some way, shape or form, I would imagine. Because for all the quaint, you know, getting out, getting away from the city type of vibes that I have with the village, because obviously I'm from a metropolitan city here in London, people that actually live there know the truth of it and it's not as rosy as it seems on the surface. So when you kind of, you know, you know, dig a bit and scrape away from all that, you get to see what's really going on, you know, the backstabbing, um, the rumours, the gossiping, um, some really kind of quote-unquote evil things going on behind the scenes. You start to realise that most villages and most little small towns have this sort of thing going on, you know, in some way, shape or form, or in some aspects. And I love how they were able to really tell those stories all at once right tell, tell stories about local politics organized crime mass immigration drugs epidemic antisocial behavior um you know family issue stuff like they, they told it really well especially the first two seasons but if anything i would say the third season kind of fell off a cliff a little bit and more so because of just how unrealistic ryan is as a teenager and his relationship quote unquote with his flipping dad um tommy and again this is major spoiler alert so if you haven't watched it please skip ahead and if you don't want to hear anything about happy valley but i thought the relationship tommy had with his i thought the relationship ryan had sorry with tommy didn't make any sense in the series because in the series um tommy is responsible or he's blamed for the death of um, Catherine, what's her name in here? Catherine Carewood's daughter. So essentially, for what we can understand in the show, um, Tommy Lee um, w pushed um, Catherine's daughter to the brink, you know, maybe gaslighting, mind game, manipulation, just being an absolute piece of shit, and then ended up kind of, you know, impregnating um, the daughter. And I think there's an assumption that it was by rape. And obviously, when the daughter was, sorry, when the, when the daughter did give birth, she then suffered maybe from postpartum or something and basically she was pushed to the edge until the point where she self-expired so the family kind of blames a lot of the damage that happened post the Catherine Cable's daughter dying on this Tommy guy and I think as when the daughter died Catherine Cable and her and her husband split up because Catherine went to look after the flipping baby um because no one went to look after the baby one of the brothers moved out of the home it really fractured the entire family as you'd imagine self-expiry would do right especially for a close-knit family in a small village it kind of rocked them to their core and they're still suffering from the after effects of it so Tommy's got a lot of blame you know on his hands and he's caused a lot of damage and he's hurt a lot of people within that direct family alone but of course he also happens to be ryan's dad right the kid that came out of that whole horrible ordeal um you know his name's ryan and that's obviously his dad but i think in the beginning when he's a kid and he finds that out i think it's somewhat interesting and makes sense because he's acting out in school he's kind of maturing into a young quote-unquote young man or whatever right he's starting to realize his power he's maybe showing tendencies of you know crazy unpredictable um 
impulsive kind of traits that maybe Tommy has. So it's maybe some cause for alarm. I understand that, especially if you're a parent, that makes complete sense. But then it feels like when it's season three and he becomes a teenager, why does Ryan still persist on trying to have a relationship with this person, with Tommy? It makes no sense and it really throws off the entire show. It's not believable in the slightest. It doesn't make any sense why any 16-year-old who's aware and can read between the lines that this person who you called dad was also responsible for putting your grandmother, who's also essentially your you know, surrogate mother at this point, or your de facto mother in hospital for four months, responsible for killing one of her colleagues by reversing a car over the dead body a couple of times. Like, absolutely heedless stuff. Like, legit murderer. You know, he killed two of his friends in a flat. Loads of people got a trail of bodies actually Tommy in the series he actually murdered a lot of people so the fact that Ryan still tries to pursue a relationship with his dad throughout season 3 just doesn't make any sense to me the other bit that's really annoying that kind of threw me off and didn't really make for a good finale was how Claire suddenly became an op like suddenly the sister of Catherine Carewood who kind of knows everything that happened at the time was there was maybe helping to you know mend whatever wounds that Catherine Carewood might have had from that experience was also one of the first people one of the first people to go and accompany Ryan um to visit his dad in prison right it just didn't make any sense for me it just didn't make any sense if anything the escape from the um you know from the court made a lot of sense because I think there's a couple of articles I saw and got on a reddit that basically you know showed a lot of kind of elaborate um escapes from magistrate offices or courts in general when people are getting tried here in england it probably happens quite often and imagine in england too without the threats of guns um it probably is a risk worth taking especially if you're going to get double digit or live prison sentences just be out a few more weeks on a run i completely understand it so i can believe that could happen right where a gang could organize the escape of somebody that's you know done some heinous crimes you know in open court i can understand that happening for sure but for me the Claire thing just didn't make any sense why would the sister be willing to go with the son to go it just didn't make any sense if anything they should have wiped their hands of Ryan and let him go by himself and arrange it I mean whatever happens happens after that regard but clearly they didn't want to do that because you know nice people but I felt personally that the finale wasn't that great I know some people like the Guardian are really harping on about how amazing it was but I think they're essentially just you know they're kind of capping and lying to be honest this is a review here from the Guardian says Happy Valley for now review one of tv's greatest trilogies gets a fiery farewell i don't think it's a great trilogy. i think the first two seasons were solid i think the third kind of fell off a cliff um it says here yeah, brutal tender funny compelling and heartbreaking to the last um there is nothing left to do now but look back on happy valley and bid all its dizziness and um, their creator and, or an ode so bid to bid its denzies it's din denizens whatever that word is i never heard of that word denizens and their creator an an or an awed farewell after three seasons sally wainwright has concluded one of the greatest trilogies in modern television she always planned to tell her bereaved protagonist story in a uh, three parts you feel even though she hadn't felt like keeping her word Catherine care would herself would step in and make sure she did Catherine um sarah lancashire of course is the center of happy Valley's dramatic universe and the partnership between lancashire and wainwright's drama is equivalent of victoria wood and julia waters separately they're brilliant together they're in invincible in a professional capacity Sergeant Kaywood knows every bad and, and generally twats and sometimes shit post shit pot sorry good and, and doing their best and in the care in the colder valley outside work she assisted to recovering alcoholic Claire and a former wife of Richard um Derek Riddle and a mother of two and a grandmother of one she's also the woman who is, will go to her grave born the loss of a 16 year old of more than the loss of 16 years ago of her 18 year old daughter Becky who died by suicide after being raped and impregnated by the ship post by the ship pot of ship post Tommy Lee Royce which is played by James Norton again he played that role really well so big up him we have spent three seasons seeing Catherine wrestle with grief um, watching her try not to be consumed by the hatred of Tommy and find her way through the fear love and worry resentment that were incapable of part of raising Ryan the baby Becky left behind the other thing that was also weird I thought was this random storyline with the Faisal the Asian dude that works in the chemist or owns a few chemists and him being responsible for basically the benzo epidemic that happens in that small town suddenly murdering a woman 
kind of getting away with it it didn't make any sense again because he's quite clumsy he has to go you know because i think he's neighbors with a lady in this tv series and to go into her home i guess it's also assumed that they're having an affair where he's getting some sort of sexual favors for giving her benzos and whatnot but to get to the house he kind of jumps over the garden wall and stuff he's not very athletic he's kind of a frail looking guy kind of clumsy kind of you know whatever and somehow no one sees him all these times this kind of Asian dude is climbing over fences you know in daytime in a small village where people are always window twitching and you know looking at their neighbours and seeing Wild Guan and being nosy no one spotted him like for real come on let's be real and then he became the kind of the perfect murderer and able to get away with it with little to no repercussions I don't really think that made sense so there's parts of it that really threw me off that I didn't really like um, but it continues here let's end the review Oh, it's more of it. It's so long. Um, the plot episode left the general sense of there being an awful lot, possibly too much to do in the finale. Even with the extended running time of 17 minutes, Tommy had escaped from prison and made contact with Ryan, encouraging him to run away with him to Spain. Catherine and Claire's relationship had been sundered, seemingly irreparably by the deepest betrayal. But that's the thing, like I said, like I just didn't find funny. I didn't make any sense. Like In the end, the kid's talking to the guy through a PlayStation. He's um and ari whether or not he should go to flipping Marbella with him. It's just bullshit it didn't make any sense especially when you consider the damage that tommy has done to his direct family and to somebody that he said he loves and somebody that's essentially his de facto mother and Catherine Kerwood. i just didn't understand the premise behind that oh it continues um don't doubt wayne wright said uh, was a lesson of the finale um as sure-footed as many well walkers and aided by the cast without a weak link she took us through the neat but truthful resolutions to every part of the story it had a redemption justice bitter laughs and fire in its blood now it's all over farewell then to our magnificent valley girl let's hope Catherine finally gets her peace where she's going but yeah all right decent show enough to watch um not up there with stuff like spooks of course not even stuff like the beer was probably a lot bit lot better than this but i think as a short you know um mini series type of thing especially if it's going to end after three seasons and that's it and we just walk away like you know how the wire did four perfect seasons fair enough fair enough but i think it started off really good season one season two and then season three for me got a little bit you know it didn't really it wasn't really grounded in any sort of uh, believability it kind of pulled me out of it and i kind of got a little bit annoyed and again the the, the face off between you know Catherine carewood and flipping tom at the end come on brother like this this guy was legitimately at the point of him escaping from prison he's under the assumption or well for some reason that he thinks Catherine carewood was responsible for his mother's death whether indirectly or directly and he's he's filled with rage that's why he's consuming rage that's why he decides or that's why he says when he's actually escaping from prison he asks the guy that he's in the flipping van with have you got a gun or something because his mission which might end up you know messing up his escape plan to live this that's the thing that makes sense if i'm serious at the end of it sorry let me just before we move on the tommy lee character is basically it feels like coming to a quiet acceptance that this ideal getaway of like escaping court on a bicycle you know right under the nose of the police and then being whisked away in a van to a nondescript place somewhere to wait for your son to decide if he wants to come to my bear with you to live your life happy and whatnot um is like a pipe dream he comes to accept it because he's so consumed by revenge because you kind of feel like this whole series is about revenge it's about you know um suppressed trauma and not addressing the pain of yesteryears whatever right but revenge is kind of a through line that kind of ties it all together and he's willing to risk his um life to basically amend or to kind of correct whatever it was went on especially if he thinks that Catherine carewood was the one responsible for killing his mum. so he goes back to that town to wait for his son but also slash to kill Catherine carewood then he gets there and because he's injured in a fight before he gets there he just sits there and starts talking and then douses himself in petrol and lights himself on fire like come on really the same guy that was like legitimately happy to like run over somebody he just met and doesn't know much about because she happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time is now suddenly the person that's going to be you know lighting themselves on fire after sobbing and crying that they want to be a good dad i just didn't think that was believable it didn't make much sense to me and i didn't really like it so for me not so great i wouldn't give it five stars maybe three as a final season but hey we've all got different criteria when it comes to that